Hello guys, hope you have been having a great day. In this video, I want to tell you about capacitance grading in transmission lines. So, even before I tell you what capacitance grading is, I need to tell you what grading is and why it is used in transmission lines. So, you must have come across insulation cables in which there is a conductor and a layer of insulation all around it. So, in transmission lines, it is the same you have a big layer of insulation all around the conductor to protect it from various mechanical and electrical uh, parameters. So now uh, I need you to consider this conductor, this conductor with this insulation all around it. So there is always a dielectric heating which, going, which is going to take place in the insulation. So, and this heating is more just around the conductor and it is very less when it comes to the surface of the insulation. So, to uh, it is a kind of this picture. The uh, insulation very much far from the conductor is under stressed while the insulation very very close to the conductor is over stressed. So, to avoid this and to maintain equal stress all over the insulation we do something called grading. And this grading is of two types. One is capacitive grading and the other is intersheath grading. In this video I would like to talk about the capacitive grading in the transmission lines but um, in the next video I'll definitely talk about the intersheath grading. So when it comes to capacitive grading the word capacitive itself makes us think that there is um, some permittivity and capacitance is involved. So it is exactly that. I need you to consider a cable. As you can all see this is my cable. Uh, this violet thing is my conductor and this is my first layer of insulation, this is my second layer and this is my third layer of insulation. So I now think uh, you have got a rough picture of what exactly this is. We are using three different layers of insulation around the conductor instead of a single layer and the speciality is each layer of insulation has different permittivity. So let me just assume that the permittivity of the first layer is epsilon 1, of the second layer is epsilon 2 and the third is epsilon 3. And uh, let me also tell you that f the distance from the this to this and of the second layer of insulation and the third layer of insulation I'm thinking that they are R1, R2 and R3. So now this uh, the radius of the first layer of insulation is R1, of the second layer of insulation is R2 and the third is R3. And the radius of the conductor is R. Okay, so I need you to picture this in your mind or just have a rough sketch elsewhere because I'm going to shift this away right now. We all know the basic formula for E is equal to Q by 2 pi epsilon naught epsilon x into x. So this is the basic formula for the um so uh this x is the distance in and in our case that is a radius and this is the permittivity of that material in that specific radius so we'll be using this formula for in the next few minutes so first first consider the insulation layer one so when you're considering that you have two points um, let me draw a rough sketch again. You have x is equal to r, which uh, you have this point, you have this point and this point. So that is where the uh, permittivity epsilon 1 is present. So if you're considering insulation 1, it extends from x is equal to r to 
x is equal to r1. So, so we can write e is equal to q by 2 pi epsilon naught epsilon 1 r which is e at x is equal to r and e at x is equal to r1 is given by e is equal to q by 2 pi epsilon naught epsilon 1 r1 so at uh, in the first layer of insulation in the first layer of insulation we have e at x is equal to r and e at x is equal to r1 which are given by these two formulae now we need to calculate the same for the second layer of insulation where x extends from r1 to r2 so we have when x extends to r1 to r2 at x is equal to r1 we have e is equal to this and e is equal to this at r2 remember we use epsilon 2 here because this is the second layer of insulation of which the permittivity is epsilon 2 similarly in the third layer of insulation at r2 we have e is equal to q by 2 by epsilon naught epsilon 3 remember epsilon 3 is the permittivity for the third layer of insulation and at r we have e is equal to q by 2 by epsilon naught epsilon 3 my bad r so this and this are the values for the third layer of insulation so now let us look at this now uh, let us think what if all these layers are operated at the same electric field intensity so uh, assuming this electric field intensity is also maximum so when we are assuming this which means uh, is uh, q by 2 by epsilon naught epsilon 1 r is equal to q by 2 by epsilon naught epsilon 2 r2 and so on so r1 r and which is equal to q by 2 by epsilon naught epsilon uh, 3 r2 and so on so when we are equating all these things we finally get 1 by epsilon 1 r is equal to 1 by epsilon 2 r1 which is equal to 1 by epsilon 3 r2 so this is what we get when the same maximum electric field intensity is uh, seen that it is there in the different layers of insulation so from this from this we can uh, gather that epsilon 1 r is equal to epsilon 2 r 1 is equal to epsilon 3 r 2 so this is what we infer from the above equation so uh, now we know that the variation of electric field intensity is um, is already uh, seen here so the operating voltage V uh, you know this V is equal to integral EX DX but here we have three layers of insulation now what does that mean we have three different layers of insulation which means you have to integrate it for three different types of things so for the first layer ex dx integral r to r1 which is the first layer of insulation plus integral r1 to r2 ex dx plus integral r2 to capital r ex dx so now on further simplification you know that ex is 2 uh, q by 2 by epsilon naught epsilon 1 so so now uh, from r uh, now ex is equal to q by 2 pi epsilon naught epsilon epsilon 1 or 2 or 3 depending upon where we are using it into x epsilon x so now write it from 1 2 and 3 I'm just I'm doing just that so this is the next step which we uh, write uh, V is equal to from radius R to R1 this R1 to R2 and R2 to R 
So now we can take out q by 2 pi epsilon naught uh, outside as a common term. Epsilon naught as a common term. So now what do we have? We have 1 by we have 1 by we have 1 by epsilon 1 into logarithm of r1 by r and plus 1 by epsilon 2 into natural logarithm of r2 by r1 plus 1 by epsilon 3 so this is what we have now we can easily say that uh, we know that uh, epsilon 1 r is equal to epsilon 2 r is equal to epsilon 3 r so which means that um, let me just multiply let me just uh, if I uh, bring out this epsilon 1 epsilon 2 epsilon 3 outside and I can replace this this whole term uh, you, you you'll just watch which is equal to multiply each and every term and divide it with r so r by epsilon uh, r by r and again this is uh, r1 because you have epsilon 2 right so r1 and this is r2 and this is r2 so if you multiply and divide both if you mul uh, multiply uh, both the numerator and denominator with r1 and so on now we know that r epsilon 1 is equal to r1 epsilon 2 is equal to r2 epsilon 3 what does that mean i can pull the r epsilon 1 r1 epsilon 2 r2 epsilon 3 outside which gives me the freedom to write q by 2 pi epsilon naught epsilon r into I'll, di I'll directly put it down as x epsilon x say because we know that our, our, we know that r epsilon 1 is equal to r1 epsilon 2 I'm just putting it down as epsilon x x so where x is radius so because these all values are equal I'm just directly putting it like that I hope there's no confusion in that now this into r into natural logarithm of r1 by r plus r1 into ln of r2 by r1 plus r2 into ln of r by r2 so this is what we get now we can replace we can replace this term with a simple emacs this is what this is why i brought all these terms outside now i'm replacing this with a simple emacs there you go or just t but i have assumed that i'm operating at them at the maximum possible thing so maximum possible intensity so I'm just putting it down as Emacs so this is a formula for the voltage that uh, is actually present in there uh, at which the uh, operation is done so the operation voltage is given by Emacs into R into ln of R1 by R plus R1 into ln of R2 by R plus R2 into ln of capital R by R2 where if you have any doubt, you can just refer to the first figure which I've shown you. Hope this helped you and have a lovely day ahead. Bye.